Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the North Dallas Plano Career Focus Group meeting. We're very glad you're with us this morning. It is July 22nd, 2022. Our agenda this morning, we'll start out with success stories. Uh, we'll then uh, have everybody put their 30 second introductions into the chat window. We'll then hear from our committee reports. And then we will have our speaker right around 9.55 or 10 o'clock. For those on Zoom, please, uh, just any questions you have throughout the presentation, please just open up the chat window or the chat box and you can enter your questions there. That's also where you're gonna be putting in your 30 second introductions and you're welcome to put that in there. For those watching on Facebook, good morning. Thank you for being with us. Any questions you have, please just put your questions into the comment field. Uh, somebody did say, Krista asked, who's playing? It's quite a mashup of songs. That's Dr. K Boogie Woogie. You can find them on Facebook and YouTube, Dr. K Boogie Woogie. Please note this event is being recorded and is currently live on Facebook. The recording will be on the Career DFW Facebook page and the Career USA YouTube channel for others to view in the future. By participating in this event, you give consent for your name and picture to appear. Please note that any comments you put in the Zoom chat window will not appear in the recording. Well, good morning, everybody. My name is Jeff Morris. Since 2007, I've been facilitating and leading the North Dallas Plano Career Focus Group. Uh, the group's been around since the late 1990s. I took it over in 2007 when the prior uh, leader of the group uh, got a job. In 2008, I started a website called careerdfw.org, a website to help those who are unemployed in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. In 2012, I launched a second website, careerusa.org, to help those around the United States. I have written a book called What I've Learned About Your Job Search that you may not know. It is available on Amazon. And since 2017, I've been a member of the practice interview team, and you'll hear more about the pit crew in just a moment. We like to start the meeting off with uh, good news, success stories. Do we have any landings out there? Anybody, you're welcome to unmute your mic and tell us your good news. Going once, going twice. All right, well, we'll move on here. All right, uh, what we'd like you to do now, if, if you will, open up the Zoom chat window and please put in your 30 second introductions. We'd like to have your name, comma, phone number, comma, email address, comma, the position you're looking for, comma, two or three target companies, and then hit the return key. I will get all this information out to everybody this afternoon in an email. That way, you know, please look it over, see who else on that list you can help. Who else has got a company and you go, oh, I have a contact with that company. Help somebody else out if you can. Look over the list this afternoon. I will also use that, uh, everybody who's put their information in the chat window to update the roster, to uh, make sure that uh, we get you updated and have you count it in case you're using this for a workforce solutions uh, event. And uh, you will only get the email if we know you put your information in the chat window. So uh, those are the two things. So please do that. We'll give you 30 seconds on the clock. Welcome to keep putting your information in as we continue on here. All right, uh, if, you, uh, if you know somebody who's unemployed, if you know somebody who's not familiar with Career DFW or Career USA, please let them know about the two websites. Uh, both are totally free. They don't collect any personal information. They're just there to help you in your job search. One of the things you'll find on the Career DFW calendar or the Career DFW website is a uh, series of calendars in many different colors and it'll have job fairs in pink, uh, special workshops in gold, uh, meetings that are meeting in person are in blue, webinars are in purple. So as you can see in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, there's a lot of things going on for anybody who wants to participate in an event. All right, it's time to hear about the practice interview team. Good morning, Mark. Hey, good morning, Jeff, and good morning, everyone. So uh, we've hit the slow time of the year for the practice interview team. I think uh, you would expect that to be Thanksgiving and Christmas, but no, that's not it. It's very busy at Thanksgiving and Christmas. Uh, so you should keep working, but 
uh, there is and has been every year that I've been doing this a little slow down in August when kids go back to school. Uh, so that means there's lots of spaces available in the practice interview team for you to come and practice. And so here's how it works. The pit crew is a group of volunteers. We've all been hiring managers and we're all in job transition or have been through job transition. So I myself went through three job transitions before I retired. And so we're a very sympathetic and empathetic group. We believe that the best way for you to build your confidence and enhance your chance of landing through uh, your interview is to experience it. So we give you a very genuine and realistic and customized interview experience based on a job description that you pick out and uh, your resume, of course, and where you fit or stand in the process. So if it's early in the process or it's late in the process when you're interviewing with C-level, we'll give you a different set of questions and a different style of interview. So uh, we encourage you to practice early and practice often. So practice early means you can practice even if you don't have an opportunity in hand, just find a job description that looks good to you something maybe close to your dream job and send that in and you get a chance to practice and you'll get the feedback that's uh, so necessary to see if there's any you know, hitch in your get up. And then uh, practice often, you can practice as many times as you like, we don't mind. As a matter of fact, we encourage it. And uh, for different job opportunities or for different uh, interviews in the same cycle, uh, you're welcome to practice as much as necessary until you feel like you can be confident and uh, effective uh, and telling your story, uh, how you can help your potential employer. So when you're ready to practice, send your information in to dallaspitcrew at gmail.com. And Jeff circled that in red on the card there. So that gets everything started. And please just reach out to me via email, not by LinkedIn. Uh, and I'll begin the process of setting up your interview, which takes a couple of days. We'll line up three uh, interviewers, and then there'll be you, and we'll, we'll pick a time. Uh, it'd be good when you send in your information to include what day, well, plus two and plus three days, uh, morning or afternoon, just let me know and uh, narrow it down a bit. And then we'll set up, go to work setting up your practice interview, which the total interview with the feedback takes about an hour and 15 minutes. You'll get a recording of it. And everything the pit crew does is absolutely free. So don't worry about any cost at all. The best part of the pit crew is the feedback you get, which occurs immediately after the interview is over. So it'll be focused on that opportunity, the job description and the, the level that you were interviewing at. So uh, practice early, practice often. The pit crew also offers a one-way practice interview. This is where you just talk to a video bot. It's very awkward, I have to say. So I just give you a chance to get used to doing that. I give you the questions in advance. There's only four of them. When you engage the tool, you'll have three minutes to answer each question. And then you can take a look at your video afterwards. And if you're not happy with it, you can practice again. And I recommend that until you feel like you can do that as, as well as a face-to-face -face interview. And it's, believe me, if you haven't done it, it's tough. It's tough to just talk to a computer when nobody's on the other end. There's no feedback at all. Um, just send me an email, you know, the usual way, and I'll set up a one-way practice interview for you. There's my LinkedIn profile. You can search on LinkedIn. You can search the pit crew. Uh, if you search my name, then include the middle initial Mark A. McDonald. I think I'll be on the first page there. And uh, just include a message when you request the link in that we met on North Dallas Career Focus Group. I want to be sure I'm adding people to my network who are involved in job search. And so that's the best way to uh, link in with me. And I have a pretty good sized network in the Dallas Fort Worth area that'll help you find companies. Uh, or uh, people that, who work in your target company list. So that's the best, mm -hmm. most relevant reason to uh, try to build your network on uh, LinkedIn. And what's left? Co uh, coaching. There's one other thing I do is I coach. This is just something I do personally, is I coach people on how to answer the question, why did you leave your last position? So being laid off three times and, uh, you know, being through that process. And also I was I, I, you know, those three times I also laid off a bunch of people uh, before I, you know, it was my turn. Uh, so I've, I've gained some experience in how to answer that question uh, with brevity and confidence. And we'll answer, we'll storyboard how to answer that question, but also any follow up questions that 
arise from your particular situation. So we'll have a confidential discussion. We can do that on the phone or on Zoom and just reach out to me in the usual way at dallaspitcrew at gmail.com. And that's also free, no charge for that at all. And then I think the final thing is I'm always looking for new volunteers to join the pit crew. So if you're in job transition, have been a hiring manager as part of your professional responsibility, then you've got all the prerequisites necessary to be a member of the pit crew and provide interview experience to candidates. It's a great way to give back during your job transition. You'll have a, a group of peers about, I try to keep the mailing list up about 30 people. So uh, volunteer when you can, doesn't matter what industry you come from, reach out to me and I'll tell you more information how to get involved with the pit crew. Thanks. Mark, thank you very, very much. All right, let's see here. Uh, good morning, Walt. Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome. You, you have some great news today from Brandy and her insights. They're really fantastic, and she's so willing to share those with us. And so thank you much, Brandy, for being with us today. Well, what do I do? Well, I also help with interviewing as well. So as I was looking around after I retired, you know, I got one of those job offers. Actually, it wasn't a job offer. It was an offer not to work. So you sign here and you get a few weeks pay, that sort of deal. So I took that offer. It's a nice thing to get paid for not working. But anyway, I, I was looking around in the, in the Metroplex to see what there was going on in the interviewing uh, situations. And I found uh, Mark McDonald's pit crew, which I thought was absolutely fantastic. A great, a great thing that we can do to help us in our job search. But as I was watching the interviews, I was thinking, yeah, but how do I get prepared? And what am I really doing? And what is my mindset into this interview? And so kind of looked at the scale of the mindset of, uh, please God help me answer these questions and hope they choose me and wait by the phone to the, uh, I'm excited about being here. I look forward to talking with you and have a conversation about the interview and selling ourselves, which is who we are, what we do and how we can help. So how do we do that in an interview? So I'll put together the interview success workshop. Now it's free, it's very informal. Uh, I like to set an environment of learning, not one of squirming. So what to do is just that QR code you see up there on the screen is uh, starting an email to my Yahoo email address to register to attend. Now I only have one or two people at a time do it online right now, but the idea is how do we focus on selling those three elements? I am, I do, I help, and to differentiate ourselves in a very positive way. So it's fundamentals. Okay. If you can change your attitude to a real energetic or highly interested motivation in the job in the company, you already twice, three times, four times better than the typical candidate. But you got to do some things to get to that point. So that's what I focus on. Very informal setting. Yes, you're going to get interviewed. You're going to get uh, covering the basic categories of questions, strategies, approaches, ideas, structures, options, how you might respond to that, depending on who's asking what the question is and where you are in the process. So we focus on those things in a, I like to say, a fun learning environment. I mean, we're all here to learn. So it's not a test and it's not an exam. So all you have to do is send me that email. You can look me up on the LinkedIn. It tells you more details about the workshop. Not only will you get your interview video, but you're going to get a handout that's got several things on it besides that about interviewing, some things about thank you notes and questions and how, how to analyze the job description, those kinds of things, and an hour-long video that goes over all of that. So you get all that, and it's free of charge. I'm currently offering 50% referral fees for those who have run through the workshop. So you want to jump in and make a lot of money with that. So come along, sign up. We call it learning without squirming. Is interviewing like the day you got word that in your own lookalike contest, you came in third. So don't wait, don't delay, come practice today for the best interview hiring managers have heard. Thank you very much, Walt. All right, it's time to hear about the uh, career tip of the week. The career tip of the week is taking the month of July off. Uh, there'll be new tips starting in July, but Rosanna has gone and found a uh, document on the Career USA website that she wants to share with everybody. I'll put the link in the 
uh, comment in the chat window. I also will copy it and put it in the email this afternoon in case you want to go back and read it because it's sort of long and she's going to cut it down a little bit for us. So good morning, Rosanna. Good morning, Jeff. Good morning, everybody. All right. Well, this week's tip of the week is going to be five ways to prepare for a job interview. All right. So just in, in um, general, the purpose of an interview is twofold. First, the interviewer will want to learn more about your skills and background. And then second, and perhaps more importantly, the interviewer will want to get, get a feel for you as a person. So interviewing for a job is as much you showing how well a fit you are for the company culture and environment, as well as providing your qualifications. So there are a few qualities that experienced hiring managers always look for. Enthusiasm, technical interest, and confidence. Interviewers are well aware of how stressful an interviewer can be. And so um, don't worry too much about that. We all understand nerves and a good interviewer will usually take steps to put you at ease. So job interview fundamentals. Interviewing for a job gets easier the more you do it. And I keep hearing Walt and, and Mark talking about practice, practice, practice. So although each interview will be different, Many interview questions will still stay the same <clears throat> from one week from one um, interview to the next. So knowing what to expect and having a firm grasp of the fundamentals will help you prepare for the job interview that will be very successful. Regardless of the field that you're applying in, every interview ultimately exists to do four things. Provide you with an opportunity to present your background and work history in a thorough and accurate manner, building up the information found in your resume, allow you to gather data about the company, industry, position, and specific opportunity, give you a chance to link your abilities, skills, and interests to the specific job you're applying to while keeping your company's needs in mind, and then letting you build your case for why you're a good fit for the company and why they should hire you over the competition. Now, every interview will usually start with an open-ended question such as, tell me about yourself. This is your opportunity to lay out the work history and experience in as much detail as you feel is necessary. Don't hold back information in hopes that you'll come up with it later. Um, you'll wanna lead with your strongest stories that demonstrate that you are the right person for the job. Once you've been given a brief brief but detailed summary, the interviewer will then provide you with a bit of information about the company and the position. They may give you an opportunity at that point to ask questions. Take advantage of this as a way to demonstrate your understanding of the position, which can also build rapport and prove that you are paying attention. You can then link those key bits of information to your own skills and experience once the specific questions start. So now preparing for a job interview. Let's talk about the five job interview preparation strategies. So first, ask the right interview questions. An interview provides you with an opportunity to get to know the people you'll be working for, and you should always take advantage of this. If you're not sure where to start, you can try some of the following job interview questions, such as what is the most important issue or problem facing the department? How long have you known about this need or issue? How have you been trying to fill this need? Have you been using the present staff, independent contractors or employees borrowed from other departments? What skills do you find most critical to get the, this job done? Why did you select me for this interview? Is there a unique aspect of my background that you think would be especially helpful for the job? You'll want to personalize the questions to, you ask uh, to the specific role, and then they want to get a general, you want to get a general vibe also for the interview. But pointing questions like these can show you um, how you're working to align with the company and the priorities and their goals. So number two, do your research before your interview. The first step of writing a professional resume is researching the company and tailoring your resume to the job posting. The same is true for a job interview. You'll want to do some work in advance to, to the, have the answers to some of the most common job interview questions. First, such as, why do you want this job? Why did you leave your last job? 
where do you see yourself in five years? What goals do you have for your career? What are your greatest strengths and weaknesses? What do you like most about your current job or what do you like least? There are a handful of questions you can always count on to come up in any job interview, such as resume questions, assessment questions, role-playing questions, and then questions seemingly that come out of left field. There are stress questions. They don't come up in every interview, but it's good to be prepared for them. The interview is testing, the interviewer is testing you to see how well you do with pressure and how well you respond to when you're put on the spot. Number three, handle the money question like a pro. An interviewer may ask you what sort of money you need to consider a job offer. Avoid giving a specific figure unless you're asked specifically to do so. Instead, the best offer is to give a range. Fourth, wrap up your job interview. As an interview begins to wind down, you'll have opportunities to wrap up any of those loose ends or circle back to questions you still have or any, anything else that seems relevant. By this point in the process, you may have a good feeling about how well the interview has gone. You may even wanna ask the interviewer how they thought it went. You can't go wrong with asking the interviewer about the next step in the process. You'll also want to be truthful about any other opportunities that you're exploring and any timeline that you're working on that may affect the interviewer's decision. Fifth, consider professional help. Interviewing is a skill that can be honed with a job interview practice. Again, practice, practice, practice. If you're looking to advance your career, it pays to reach out to professional resume writers or job coaches who are in the business of helping people package their experience and skills in a way that will be enticing to potential employers. There is no shame in getting help, especially at higher career levels. You can be sure that your competitors are doing the same and doing some advanced preparation will help you put your best foot forward. Well, this is the five ways to prepare for a job interview. You guys have a wonderful weekend. Yeah. Mute my mic here. Rosanna, thank you very, very much. Not a problem. All right. Uh, we were not going to be meeting for lunch due to Dallas and Collin County being placed in the red category by the CDC. They will be not, they won't have an organized lunch today. Uh, just in a couple minutes here, our main event, we'll hear about transitioning into a position of strength with Brandy Shade. Uh, just want to talk about upcoming sessions. Uh, the next two weeks, we will not have a meeting. I'm actually going to be out of town. I'll be unavailable to uh, be connected via internet. So uh, we'll have no meetings on the 29th and the first Friday of uh, August. But uh, the second Friday of August, on August 12th, we will have open forum. I will get emails back out to remind everybody about our sessions. All right, it's time for our main event. Uh, many of you know Brandy. She's a uh, Help. She's been with us many times. She's been, you know, other career groups around the DFW area uh, have her uh, present. Uh, she does uh, a wonderful job talking about strength finders, how you can use it, and how to how to transition to a position of strength. So, Brandy, thank you for being with us, and I'll turn it over to you. All right. Can you guys hear me? Okay. Hello. Yeah. Yes, I can hear you. Okay, and can someone confirm that you can see my screen? We can see your screen. Okay, awesome. All right, so good morning, everybody. Um, first of all, I know some of you, you guys know me, some of you don't. Um, I am a, a full-time strengthology leadership coach and consultant, and um, I'm here to talk about how you guys can get to know yourselves really well really understand how to communicate well to others who you are and what you bring to the table, um, as well as I can help with the, the portion of how do I um, find the right job for me? And, and as, I, as I do that, how do I actually connect with human beings to talk about you know me being able to bring something to this particular job? Um, you guys, it looks like you have a lot of help on the interview side. So that's awesome. Once you get to that stage, I'm kind of like the, the stuff bef before you get there. 
So um, I'm going to first ask before I jump into things, um, what questions are in you guys' mind right now? Like everybody's in here is at a different spot and is, you know, going through a different part of their job transition. What are some of the questions you would like, you would love to come out of this session answered today, at least, at least getting my perspective on it? Anything burning? Hi, uh, this is David from Atlanta, Randy, Hi, and, and I was able to see your presentation on Monday morning, and I found it fascinating. Um, I did take the Clifton Strengths um, exam, and I have my top five uh, skills, and I and I am going to sign up today for the what you're showing on the screen there. Uh, but I, I'm curious. Okay, so I've taken the test. That's great. Here's my two word question. So what? Uh, yeah, so, now, so, now what, right? Now what? Now exactly. what? <laughs> it's, it's, not, it's not so what, it's now what, exactly. Now what? So, yeah, so, so now that was- can, Yeah, once you sign up for this, then just reach out to me and I will yes. walk you through everything. Perfect. Awesome, thank you. Yeah, and um, I put my information in the chat. So you should have my email address, my LinkedIn and my phone number. You guys can contact me any, any way that works for you. Thank you. Well, yes, what else? If you've got a question you want, or you know something you want to find out about before we get started, please go ahead and unmute your mic. And I'll be sure to get all of Brandy's information out into the email I put out this afternoon also. And I want all y'all's questions. It doesn't have to be specific to this session. Just anything that you're struggling with during this job transition um, phase of your life that you're going through right now. Nobody's struggling. <laughs> Hi, my name's Alyssa. Hi, how Hi. are you, Alyssa? I'm good, thank you. Um, I'll just put it out there as a transitioning teacher who feels like the, the, the world is mine to pursue. Um, I feel like I'm finding it funny that I find a track that I feel real comfortable with. And then I talk with somebody else who's there to help me. And then my track goes this way. And then I, then my track, you know, and I, I think I'm going to just enjoy what you have to say today so that I can find what the fit is for me, even as I have all these voices speaking and helping me, it can also be a distraction. So um, yeah. I'm grateful to be here. Yeah, I think that is such a good point that um, no matter what we're doing, there's a ton of distractions. Mm -hmm. the, the internet information and just the social media is a ton of distractions. Everybody has advice for you. It's a ton of distractions. Um, and I think one of the most important things that every single one of us here can do today is to go, who am I? What's my purpose? What have I, what have I been put here to do? What am I going to proactively pursue? What kind of energy am I going to put out there so that the right stuff is attracted back to me and really take ownership of that? And when somebody says, oh, well, you should be doing this and you should be doing that. You can say, no, I'm pretty calm. I feel confident that I shouldn't. <laughs> I will consider it, but I'm confident that this is what I'm doing is what I should be doing right now. Um, and, and, and that's really what Clifton Strengths is all about. It's all about saying, okay, what are those neural pathways in your brain um, that are highly developed and firing on full cylinders? And when we can establish that and say, this is why I do what I do. This is what I bring to the table, no matter where I go. This is my purpose here that I, I feel like I'm, or where I'm have the most strength that I'm strongest at, then you start to really hone in on this. This is who I want to work with. This is where I want to go. This is what I want to do. And then, then you can start catering your messaging to that. You can start catering um, some content on LinkedIn around that. You can start getting subject matter expertise around that. You can start interviewing for that and catering your resume towards that. But if we don't have that really solid, solidified mm -hmm. and just clear, it's not clear to anybody else either. And what you want is your message to be just, just really, really clear so that like, if I say, Hey, what are you trying to do? What are you trying to look for? And you say, well, this is what I'm all about. This is what I'm trying to do. This is what I look for. I can go, okay, now I know five people to introduce you to let me do that. But if that message isn't clear, if you're like, well, I could do this, or I could do that, or I could do this or that I'm going, I can't introduce you to anybody. Your message isn't clear. It, it, there's, there's not enough confidence. There's not enough clarity. I am not confident that I could introduce you to somebody and you guys would have 
um, you know, a good conversation because you're not showing a level of expertise in that area to me. So it's just really, really important that that you guys, um, you know, make that as solid as possible as as you move forward, so that you're putting out the right energy to everybody. Um, so I'll sh I'll show you some of that today. That was a really, really good point, Alyssa. Thank you. Um, mm -hmm. and, and hi, Brandy. I'm Chris. Um, hi calling in from, from Plano, uh, just moved up here last month. I'm also a transitioning teacher. So I think I'm going to second a lot of what Alyssa just said. Um, and you know, I'm, I'm coming from a field where I've, I've been very, um, it's been very easy to navigate, uh, jobs. I've never had really any problem, uh, getting employment in that field. And I thought I had a good handle on my brand and all that kind of stuff. And now that I'm changing careers, I'm sending out my confidence and it's getting radio silence. So, um, I think yeah. I, same thing. I'm just, I'm here to absorb, uh, what is there to offer and just kind of figure out okay. what is it that's not being focused and what is it that needs that kind of yeah, attention. And, and I'll, I'll do a, I'll do a little, a little bit on how I use LinkedIn to network too. So you guys can see how I do that when I'm trying to help people get connected, because I feel like, um, switching over from something very clear cut, like a medical field or a teaching field where the process is very clear about how you go about, you know, talking to people and getting jobs. And then you go into this like really open job market. It's very difficult to navigate that. And so I'll show a couple of tips on that, that may, might help you guys as well. There um, also was one comment in the chat window. Uh, yeah. What's the best way to share your results with potential employers that matter to them? Okay. All right, let me go through that. Um, okay. okay, so let's do this. Let's kind of, um, let's go through the process. Okay, so I'm gonna log in here for a minute and I'm going to show you a team called Liberty Mutual. Oops, go back. Um, what I'm showing you right now, by the way, I, there's two different subscriptions on this tool that I created. One of them is the management leadership subscription. So if you, if you will manage a team in the future, you might wanna sign up for that one so that you can get your whole team on board on this in the future if you like this approach. The other one, the $12 one is the one that most of you will sign up for if you decide to go through this. Um, and it's, it's, it's the one that's just gonna show the dashboard and I'll show you that in a second. So um, this is a Liberty Mutual team. There's a lot of different people on this team. What I want to point out really quickly is how different everyone is on this team. Every single person on this team has a different proportion of what they are really good at. Some people are high executionists in relationship building. Some have the influence in relationship building. Some have little bits of strategic thinking in here. We have, um, let's see if we have someone with all four. There we go. Levio here. He happens to be the leader of this team. He has, you know, elements of his top five strengths that have strategic thinking, relationship building, executing and influencing. So we can click on these and we can see that his number two strength is strategic. He thinks through what if scenarios, what if that, what if that, what if this, what if that, well, if this and this and this and that trying to get from point A to point B the quickest and clearing all distractions to get there. He also has a really strong focus on building relationships, being open and vulnerable, being transparent, making a, a long-term connection with people and building the relationship. He is very focused on how to maximize people's strengths. Hence the reason he did this with me for his team, because he really wanted to understand what is everybody's strength? You know, what, where are they going to be at their best every single day? Do we actually have them in the right roles, doing the right things to benefit themselves and the organization? And then he also had two execution strengths. One is a range uh, achiever where he's making lists and just plowing through things, checking them off, delivering, getting things done, as well as um, arranging, arranging deliverables, arranging uh, team members, arranging uh, you know strate strategy, arranging relationships, arranging coaching. Uh, all of those things are things he's going to care about getting into an, uh, into an alignment that is very efficient and is working really well in the, in the operation itself. Um, so each one of us has a completely different style, a completely different set of gifts. And as we really start to understand those, um, then we can actually start to communicate this. So let's let's do another one. Let's look at Stephanie here. She's got all kinds of strategic thinking strengths. Let's go to hers. 
um, she actually took the full, full 34 so she can see, um, you know, her full top 10 strengths. She can see, okay, I, I would be really good if I'm sitting here all day long, spending 50% of my time thinking, 20% of my time executing, 10% influencing, 20% building relationships. But I might be really good if I could just sit in my top five and distribute my day like this. You can also see that she's naturally highly organized. She's extremely creative with her, with her six, six sorry, I'm, I'm on the next five. Let's go back top five. She's got the really high quality assurance, the people management skills. She's very creative with her ideation and she's got um, learner, which is that one that says, okay, let me, um, you know, learn something, but then also teach it back and get everybody on board and sort of catalyst them to the, to the next step. So when we looked at this, we said, okay, um, you know, is she in charge of a quality assurance team? Um, you know, is she getting to do some, something that's high level quality assurance all day? Does she get to work with policies? Um, is she getting to manage a group of people? Is she getting to be creative? So we're asking all these questions to make sure that she's getting to do what she does best every day. Now let's, let's say that she was in you guys's position and she's in job transition and she doesn't know exactly what to do. She might be able to go, okay, first of all, you know, am I really energized by spending time by myself or with others? And this shows us that, look, she's, she likes a good amount of time by herself. She doesn't want to be by herself all the time. She's got 36% of her time, but she actually gets energized being by others. So then we get into the specifics and we say, okay, why? Well, she has this individualization strength, which means she really loves to manage people, manage teams and work with each individual to understand how they're motivated. And as she understands how they're motivated, she goes, okay, let's get you doing these things that you do best every day. And, and let's get you, you know, uh, working at kind of like a full capacity. And she also has the ability to say, okay, this person will partner well with this person. So she makes these really amazing productive teams. She also has these ambiverted strengths. If you've never heard that term, it means it's kind of like half introverted, half extroverted, and it kind of depends when you, you fluctuate. So when she's learning and soaking in the information, she's introverted. But when she's teaching to affirm her learning, she becomes extroverted. She's kind of got a consulting feel to her. And then she's got this ideation, which in her mind, if she's ideating, um, that's very introverted. But there's also a huge piece of ideations per, uh, personality that has to interact with the environment and have experiences that, that generate creativity. Uh, relator is relating things in your brain logically and, and relating them together, sort of that organization function. But then there's also this need to just want to relate with another human and actually interact um, and, and, and um, get to know them at a deep level. And then she has these really introverted strengths that really don't need any sort of external interaction. The context, just thinking about the historical um, trends and what happened in the past and how to bring that forward. You know, restorative is solving really big, hard, complex problems and just loving to, to figure out how to solve those problems. And then input is her research function where she loves to just dive in and research things for a long period of time. The thing I think you guys would love in this, if you're interested, is um, this personal brand. And I think why you guys will get a lot of benefit from this is because it gives you the language that when you go into an interview, when you're talking to people to say, look, this is who I am. This is what I'm about. This is what I care about most. This is what I have to bring the tape to the table, no matter where I go. Um, so for her, it says you research and study teachings from the past. You love learning about what happened historically to make quality decisions today ensure historical mistakes are not repeated and accuracy is upheld. You are a natural researcher, historical um, archiver, teacher, and consultant who teaches lessons based on history. So now, you know, you guys go, well, what kind of job would she like? Well, she could be a history teacher. She could be an analytics person who's looking at past data and bringing that forward. She could be a researcher for a company that's bringing in insights. Um, and, and she could bring this function with some other job as well. It's kind of a side function or she could make it her main function. And there's an area in here called career options that really shows, you know, these are the types of things um, these people with these strengths really enjoy. And so she could go, okay, are these really something I have done before? Are they things I have enjoyed or are they things I'll enjoy in the future? Or is this just, is this all wrong? Um, the other thing I think would be helpful for you guys in here is the actions because Yes, we should be taking these daily actions every single day, 
Um, but these are the things you should also be seeing in your job descriptions to understand if this job is really for you. You know, if this, if the, if you can see some of these things in the job description that you know you, you're going to be looking at, you know, historical past and giving context and bringing that forward, or being becoming, for example, a subject matter expert, um, which she is, she would be very good at with her context, her learner. I think she had input down here too, right? Input, so she could be an amazing subject matter um, expert at at something. And so, if the job is saying we need you to become that, then that's a good indication that she's actually going to like the job when she when she goes on to the job. Okay, let me pause there for a minute. Questions about this? I, I see the question I have is I see you have numbers one, two, three, four, five, six. So does input mean this is her sixth yes, sir. category That's that exactly she should right. be focusing on or? Yeah, so it means that when she took the assessment, um, which I didn't show that, let me go back over here. Gallup is actually the one who has this assessment, you guys. So if you're interested in getting this assessment on yourselves, you have to go to the Gallup site and you have to go to their store. I recommend getting the 34 Clifton strengths. You can see all from one to 34. If um, you wanna, take the one that just gives you the top five strengths, you can take that assessment as well. And if you've already taken the top five, but you haven't unlocked the rest of your 34, you can do that here. And you can, um, it, you don't even have to take the assessment on that one. You can just release it. So once you get the assessment um, and it's going to give you which strength is most important to you. And again, you can think of these as neural pathways in your brain that were formed by the age of 14. And some of those neural pathways just were super small. Let me show you this way, because I think this will be a better visual. So for example, for Stephanie, her context has got a huge neural pathway built up. It's got tons of information and traffic flowing on that. It's thinking all the time from this context perspective where her empathy is quite low. She just you know, would have to dig really, 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 really deep. And she'd have to put a lot of energy and a ton of time and effort to get to, okay, how can I feel what you're feeling? It's just not natural for her to do that. Now we can all learn how to do some of these things, but it's still never going to be natural for her. She can care about somebody's feelings and she can learn some mechanisms to ask certain questions or, you know, to show care through her strengths, but she's never ever going to operate like an empath that is just naturally in tune with feelings, always thinking about feelings, wondering how people feel, wanting to help people, you know, feel better. Um, that that's just her brain. You can see lots of green up here. This is the strategic thinking. She's just a really, really strong strategic thinker. Um, and she relies mainly on individualization and relator to build her relationships. And she also has, you know, one execution strength, which means she only really executes when there's a problem to solve. So if I needed her to execute as her manager, I would say, look, I need you to go solve these five problems. And she would be like a dog with a bone because the word problem is her word. That's the word that is, is triggering her brain to actually go take action and execute. Um, so does that answer your question on the, the importance of the order of the strengths? Well, yes. I mean, I guess, you know, when I was looking at those, when you had questions, uh, how to answer, I forget where exactly it was, uh, maybe career options or whatever. And it was asking about the different questions. I said, so do you want to concentrate on section one, section two, or just the top five, these top five sections are where you should be looking for those bullet points in a job description? I mean, if, if we could find a job that allows us to, to fully use our number one, two, three strength, we're golden. Now I, maybe we can't find that. And maybe we've got to use four and five and six and seven, but the more that you go down the path, you know, the less you're really going to be sitting in a place of strength. So your goal is to really find something that allows you to flex that number one, two, three, four strength. So some of you have been in environments that, you know, every time you used your strengths, you were told that you weren't, you, you weren't awesome. And if, for example, if, if I have the strength of context, but I'm in a very futuristic company or, or realm, uh, you know, I might, I might hear a lot of things here on the right about how my context isn't appreciated. 
Whereas if I'm in a company like Sabre, who has a very old system that you, and it has a lot of history, and I need a context person that understands how all of it was working, how all of it came about and how it's working today in order to push this forward, because we constantly have to go back to how it was working to bring it forward. Then I might hear all these wonderful things about context on the left-hand side. So these sentences are just indicators when you're hearing these things, it's not about you being you know, a, a, a bad person or not good enough or not having skills. It's is the environment actually an environment that's asking for your level of energy and your strengths and your skills. One of the, the best examples I can give you is the, the day I started teaching fitness classes. Let me show you my strengths really quick. When I started teaching fitness classes, which I didn't know if it was going to work, but I was drawn to it. Um, I realized that I get to use my achiever full on by teaching a fitness class. I get to achieve something. I get to start it and I get to finish. I also get to teach. I get to learn martial arts and then I get to teach martial arts to someone else. And another um, aspect of learner is mastery of that particular thing that you're doing. And I realized I love the martial arts aspect because you the, you're constantly mastering that. There's always something more to master. It's like this infinite wealth of mastery. Um, and then I started using my relator. I would come up to people before class and after class, and I would get to know them. I would relate with them. And then I would say, oh, you know, did you know this person over here also does that? And I would connect people so that people would come to class and feel a sense of community. And then when I was up there teaching, I'm also connecting with each individual because I've, I've learned how to relate to them. And then I come into class, I work both sides, right? I work the right, I work the left. It's got that balance and that consistency. Um, I'm also very consistent in the workouts and I'm also highly disciplined, meaning that when it gets really, really hard in that workout, I'm able to inspire and keep people going and say, I know this is really hard right now, but do not quit. It's, this, it's, it's not quitting that matters here. Um, and so bringing those things to that environment, I've never felt more at home in anything that I've ever done because I'm getting to flex all five of those they're working and people are affirming that they're coming to the class because that's what they come for is what I have to offer. And that's what you guys really should be striving for when you get into your next, your next position. And uh, Rich you asked, can't, you can't help, analyzing? sorry, hold on, Jeff. And you can't help, but not be successful guys. If, if you do that. Okay. Sorry. Uh, well, I, well, I think there's two things here. Number one, I think it'd be great to really sort of back up and let's talk about Clifton strengths. Uh, the question that Rich asked is who actually analyzes and translates the results so I will understand the Clifton Strengths 34 test. And, you know, going back, you know, what was Clift, you know, the, the point of Clifton Strengths was, you know, your good, your top 10 strengths, your top 15 strengths are what you're good at. And if you work on those top 10, 15 strengths, you're going to become much better. But just recognizing your bottom 10 or 15 strengths, you can work on them all you want and you may get them into your mid 20s or into maybe the bottom teens, but you're never going to become like the one person you showed empathy was her number 34 strengths. She's never going to become an empathetic person. No matter how hard she works, she's never going to be good at that. So the, I think the point of Clifton strengths is here's what you're good at. Focus on what you're good at and become better at what you can become good at. Don't worry about, you know, the, the things that are at the bottom. You just recognize it. All right, I need to be more empathetic. Or I need to be a little bit, you know, I need to just sort of realize that. But if you work on your top 15 strengths, you're going to become a much better person overall, I think. So when you when you look at your bottom strengths, for those of you who have restorative as a strength, you, you go straight to the bottom. Um, you do have to be aware of those and you have to decide how you're going to address them. You have to decide if you're going to partner with somebody, you have to decide whether you're going to outsource it and hire it to be done. You have to decide whether you are going to use some of your other strengths to accomplish the goal, even though you may not think like the person who has that as a top five strength, you do have to figure out how you are going to lock not let that become extremely detrimental to you. 
Um, and you have to be aware that it's not natural for you so that you, you may, you may like, for example, my, my empathy is a bit low. So I have to say to people, look, I'm not sure how you're feeling right now, but I do care about you. And so if you can help me understand, again, mine's a thinking one. So if you can help me understand how you're feeling, then I'll, I'll make sure to consider that. But I, I don't have the sense of knowing exactly how you're feeling at that moment. So there, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not an empath but I'm still taking into consideration that I don't want this to be a problem, you know, in, in this conversation with this person. So I think that there are some really good things that we can do to, I would say, address our weaknesses, but not try to become something that we're not. All right. So I think I sort of took things around who actually is doing the analyzing. I mean, what, is it some computer someplace or some person looking at somebody's answers when you answer all those questions? Can you explain a little bit about the background about, the millions of people who've already taken this and how they analyze it? I'm not sure I understand this question. Is this from Cliff? Uh, well, Rich asked, who actually analyzes and translates the results? R so, Rich, can you, can you tell me what you're, what you're trying to, to understand? Um, sure. I, I've, I've never done, like, I've, I've done a small assessment, but never anything like this, so I'm not sure exactly where we get the results. Is it just like, like uh, Jeff just said, is it just printed out from a software program, or is it, do we send it to you, and then you give your, um, put your opinion in there? That, that, that is my question, basically. Yeah, yeah, it's, there's three steps. The first step is to go to Gallup and to actually take the assessment. Gallup is the one who created this assessment over 40 years ago. Do, they did a lot of research to create this assessment. Um, I'll give you some background on how they did that. So they, um, there, it, was a, it was a guy named Don Clifton who was a, a professor at the University of Nebraska doing some research. And he studied just tons and tons and tons of behaviors. Um, uh, he was a psychologist um, out of people, and they started to notice pockets, you know, certain certain behaviors that seem to cling together um, uh, almost a hundred percent of the time. And they they said, okay, you know, originally they had thirty two strengths that they determined. They said, okay, once we've got these pockets of behaviors, now let's slap a, a label on them, right? We got to label them somehow. Um, and then later they even divided it more into 34 strengths as they did for the research. Um, so that's what you would be doing is you would be signing up here, taking the assessment. It takes about 45 minutes. They ask you a series of questions. And basically what they're doing is they're trying to rank all these things because we all have these neural pathways in our brains. It's just a matter of how much we're using them and exercising them. And so it's putting them in order of importance to you. And um, let me show you guys this. So there's 34 total. If we just look at the top five and we put them in order, there's 33 million combinations of just the top five in order. So that ordering that they do in the assessment process is very important because it tells me what's most important to you and then what's least important to you from a natural, from your natural brain. Okay. Um, it doesn't, it doesn't tell me everything about you. That's the whole point. I mean, of, of talking with you and getting to know you and saying, how does this work for you? And if there's 33 million combinations, I'm never going to get it absolutely hundred percent right with a person. I got to ask them, well, how does this work for you? How does, how do these strengths, you know, come together for you as a person, you are an individual that is highly unique. It, you know, there's 7 billion people on the planet, which means if we take 7 billion divided by 33 million, there's only 215 people like you on this planet and they're all different ages. So it's highly likely there's only two people on the whole planet in your age group that have your top five strengths in that order, which is why it's so important for you to find uh, managers, companies, and jobs that really match up to your strengths because there's no, you're so unique. There's no one else like you out there. And if we look at all 34 strengths, the number is astronomical. So you guys are really, really, really unique. 
Um, and Gallup has a way to test for that. So you'd go through the assessment, it takes 45 minutes, you get the results. <laughs> and as someone said, now what? Um, then you come over to the Strengthology. I'll log back out so you can see where to go here. It's Strengthology, uh, www.strengthology.co, or you can type in www.strengthologyinsights.com. They both get you to the same spot, guys. We're just in transition of the, of the web. And if you sign up for the, the $12 subscription here, if you want to get all these insights that I'm showing you here, okay? If you want the dashboard and if you want to be able to go through all these things, and then you just reach out to me and say, hey, Brandy, I need you to walk me through these strengths and tell me what this is telling me and, and help me understand you know, what I do with this now. And I'm happy to help every single one of you. Um, does that does that answer your question, Cliff? Uh, wasn't Cliff? Sorry, what was your name? Uh, Rich. Yes, thank Rich. you very much. That's okay. very thorough. I appreciate it. Okay. What other questions do we have in the chat? Uh, there was another good one here. Uh, Michelle says, "I took Strength Finder, the Strength Finder assessment in 2010. What would the value be in retaking the assessment today in 2022?" I, I'm not a per, it, it kind of depends how old you are and, and what you've been through. Um, but I don't feel the need to retake it a lot of time. I think that Gallup gets, gets it right a lot on the first time. That's what I've seen over time. Um, but if you've had a huge life change or a big trauma in your life, um, you, you could retake it because the brain could, could potentially change. Like if you had a car accident and um, hormones changed, brain changed, chemicals change, you know, things change. It, you, you could, you could have changed, but th think about this guys, when, if you took the assessment this month, and if you took the assessment next month, and you took the assessment the month after, you're not really changing as a human. You're not really changing as your, your neuroscience and your brain is not really changing. Okay. It takes a long, it would take a long time to change. And when I do see changes, what I normally see is one through 10 just does some little shifts around a little bit, like replacement changes a little bit but I rarely see anything from the bottom hopping up or vice versa. And if I do see that, I go, I really question it. I say, okay, what happened? Like, were you in a certain state of mind? Did, you know, you really had to answer the questions very differently um, to get that kind of result. I've seen, some, I've had, I've had some people take it. I have one lady, she took it. I think it was 17 times. I, I have no idea why she did this 17 times $50. She, she was trying to prove, I think that the assessment was crap. Um, what was funny is that, um, she had one strength that was consistent and it was in the number one slot on every single one. And then all the rest were all different. And it was really because she didn't want to be boxed in and be labeled. And so she just tried to prove that the assessment was wrong. But, you know, in reality, like my question to her was, well, why did you answer the question so differently each time? Um, because that's what it comes down to is your answer. You are answering the questions and you're answering the questions either consistently or differently. And that that's, um, you know, if it's so different every time, it's not going to help us actually understand you and, and know um, what you need to be doing. So, so really when you take the assessment, if you just go, look, this is who I am. I'm not going to try to be somebody for my parents. I'm not going to try to be somebody for society. I'm not going to try to be somebody for my spouse. I'm not going to try to be the parent that the kids want me to be, I'm just going to answer this who I really am. Like no one else will ever see this. It's just for me. That's when you're going to get the best result. And that's when we can actually align you properly with the right environment, the right job, the right sets of people, et cetera. What other questions do we have? Uh, John asked a question, how would you develop a personal branding statement for Stephanie using the personal brand tab on the dashboard? Yeah. So, um, can I go back to, let, let's just do mine really quick since I'm here. Okay. So what I oh, actually, let me go back up here. This is where I do it. So I say, okay, Brandy's an achiever. She loves to get things done. She loves to execute, but what does she love to execute on? What does she love to drive towards? She loves to drive and execute towards learning and teaching and consulting. She loves to drive towards relating with others and connecting with other humans. She, she loves to achieve consistency and discipline. 
what does she love to learn about? She loves to learn about getting things done and delivering. She loves to learn about relating with people. She loves to learn about how to scale things, be consistent, create fairness and balance. She loves to learn about structure and discipline and how to create systems and processes. She loves to relate with other people who are also high achievers, high learners, who are very consistent and disciplined. She's consistently achieving, consistently learning, consistently relating, consistently disciplining, and she's very highly disciplined about the way she achieves, learns, relates, con um, is consistent, and has balance. So then we go, okay, Brandy is very disciplined and consistently learning about people to help them achieve, to help them deliver. And that's what I do. So you like using the words actually that strength finder gives in your statement and yes and i apply each word to each strength right and then i look at it all and go how is this all coming together and then i say okay this is what and and i can usually build those for you from a base and then you'll go oh this is so good now let me just tweak it here and here and we can get you a personal value statement using strengths Right. And if anybody looks at my, if you look at my LinkedIn profile in my about section, you'll see that in the first sentence or the first couple of sentences, I have like a paragraph that will describe my top five strengths. And uh, I think it's a good way to, oh, here we go. All right. Yeah. Just go down to my about section there. So strategic leader, uh, let's see here, maximizer, analytical, responsibility, deliberative. So I actually use it in a sentence, you know, strategic leader by quickly spotting relevant patterns. I maximize, you know, analytical by looking at all the factors. So that's how I use strength finders to sort of describe who I am. Okay. And hopefully somebody wants somebody like that. Yeah, you put those words and that energy out there when someone reads your profile and that's what they're looking for, then they contact you. Now, I think you got to be careful because one of the 34 strengths is woo, W-O-O. -O. So you really probably don't want to use the word woo unless you sort of define it in a little bit better sense. But <laughs> how do you uh, know you're not a woo? The woo I'm not a woo, so music. I don't have to worry about that. But, <laughs> you know, for those woos that are out there, you they love the can't word say woo. I'm a woo. <laughs> they love the word woo. Uh, what else? Well, how any, do you, how any, do you, I, I'm going to go through LinkedIn as well, but is there any other questions from, from anybody in the chat? Yeah, or? yeah Michelle put in there, uh, follow up on my prior question. How can I receive a copy of the dashboard results to the assessment I took in 2010? Okay. So yep. 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 So you're going to go back to Gallup. Okay. Here. And you're going to scroll all the way to the bottom and you're going to say, contact us right here. And you're going to reach out to Gallup and you're going to say, I do not remember my login or my password and I need help finding my account so I can get my stuff. Okay, what else, guys? Oh, David says he's a woo. So we do have one woo out there for yeah. sure. <laughs> yeah. All right. So let's go to LinkedIn now. So now I know myself. I know what I'm about. I've got my brand. I know how I'm going to communicate it. I've practiced how I'm going to communicate this to others. And I'm ready to, to interact. Okay. So let's go to LinkedIn again. Let's hope to God this works today. It, it, it wasn't working on Monday, but then I came home and it worked. So I, I don't know. Let's just see how we do. Um, all right, I'm gonna click on LinkedIn here to go back to home. And um, let's say that I am looking for a particular job. Let's say we had teachers in here, okay? So let's do learning and development type job. Okay, so I'm gonna type that in, see what we got going on. I'm gonna actually click on jobs to do the filtering to pull up all the jobs that have learning and development in them. We've got 533,000 jobs. So that's a very nice job search. And um, let's say that I really like this manager of training content develop. It's a hybrid role. It's here in Fort Worth, you know, McKesson. Um, so number one, I start reading through this and I see, you know, is this really aligned with my strengths? Is this talking to me? Do I think that 
do the, and this kind of goes back to one of the questions earlier, which is, you know, if I'm going to talk to this, this hiring manager, um, or, or the recruiter, am I going to have the language based on my skills and what I have done, but also who I am innately to be able to talk to all these points and convince them that I'm the right person for the job. And if the answer is yes, then I should really work hard at um, getting in contact with this person. So the first thing you obviously have to do is apply, but the application is, you know, you're taking your resume, you're, 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 you're applying with all their fields and you're sending it into a deep, dark, just devastating database. Okay. And if you think that's the only step you have to do, then you're going to be very disappointed when you're not getting anything back. Um, because it is literally like 1% of the time that you're going to hear. And some people get lucky and they get a couple hits, but it, it's just, it's not the best way to do it, to just send it in and think that you're going to hear something. So the next thing that we have to do is we have to go, okay, I've applied for the job. Um, let me go look at McKesson and let me go click on people. And let me see, you know, you can see there's 25,000 employees that work here. And let me see if I can connect with this director of learning and, de and delivery. Let me see if I can connect with this recruiter. Um, you guys can choose the way you do it. You can just click connect and send, or you can add a note. It's up to you. It's up to you. Some people want to just do the volume approach and they want to go connect, 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 and just see who connects back. Other people want to send a really nice quality note to, to a very specific individual that's very strategic. I, I'm not going to recommend that you do it one way or the other because I've seen both ways work. So it's really just a matter of what you would like to do, the approach that you would like to take, or maybe you want to do both. But what you're trying to do is connect with recruiters. You're trying to connect with the hiring managers at McKesson. And you got to do quite a bit of them here because maybe only 50% of them actually connect back. Now, when they connect back, you can send them a message through LinkedIn and say, hello, thank you for connecting with me out here on LinkedIn. I'm really excited about this job. And when I say this job, what I do for them, I like to, I like to make this a silver platter, right? Put everything on the silver platter and just hand it to them. So I'll come over here and I'll click um, share copy link. Here we go copy link. So when I actually message them, I put the link in there because I want them to just be able to click on it and go, this is the job that this person applied for. And I want them to be able to click on my profile and say, and this is who I am. And then that job and that profile should really look, you know, similar so that they can go, oh yeah, you do look like you'd be a good match for this job. Let me look into it. Now at the, at, so I always say, thank you first. Thank you for connecting. And I always use the word connect. Thank you for connecting with me out here on LinkedIn. I'm really excited about this job. Here's the link. I bring five plus years of experience in this, 10 years plus of experience in this, and six years plus of experience in this, which I think is really aligned with this job. That's simple, guys. How many years of experience that do you have in those things? If you do not have years of experience that, that you can put on there, you're in trouble already. You, you know, it's, it's like applying for an engineering position when you don't have any engineering experience. It doesn't go over well. They, they don't take you seriously at all. Now, if you are having trouble going, well, I have experience in this, but I don't know how to quantify it. That's something we can work with and we can get the, we can get the quantities worked out so that you feel confident stating that. Then you say in the message, you say, if you are not the right person to connect with around this position, could you please connect me with the right person? And I don't know what it is about human psychology, but to hear that something's wrong and needs to be made right, people tend to respond to that and get you connected with the right person. Um, and that could be the right recruiter or, or potentially the hiring manager. But what you're really trying to do is find and connect with the recruiter and the hiring manager, or just like y'all have been doing, you look at some of your contacts, you see if anybody's connected, you try to get in, in, it connected to McKesson internally, where you get the internal recommendation. So if you notice what we just did on the, on this other side, instead of just submitting our resume to a deep, dark hole, blackness, right? Depths of despair. We connected with humans and we shared and we're, um, oh, and, and include your resume on that message. 
So job, job link, um, years of experience and, and the resume so that it's just, you know, again, silver platter, you're feeding everything to them, serving them up. Um, and, and then, um, if you don't hear back from them, pl please don't get into the space where you're like, I didn't hear back from them. They didn't respond to me. Maybe that person hasn't checked LinkedIn. Maybe they're busy. Maybe they don't, they refuse to talk to people that way. We don't know. All we can do is try to, co to connect with humans. Um, the best way you're going to get in somewhere is knowing somebody. So going back to people that have you've worked with, knowing people that can vouch for you, um, get it, letting other people get to know you. Like someone like me, if I get to know you through this coaching experience and I feel confident in your abilities and what you're trying to go for, I can introduce you to people, but you have to, you have to create these interactions and connections in order for people to be able to, to even help you get connected through the human experience, but that is where you're actually going to, you know, physically get, get the job. Let me, let me pause there for a minute. I got more, but let me pause questions, thoughts. Well, I'll, I'll throw out, and I know Walt and Mark both are on my sort of team is that, uh, if you don't send me a personal note, I won't connect with you. And because I, and I'm, and I'm the opposite by the way. So I'm on the other side of the fence. You can connect with me all day long and say, you know, you can say something to me and I'm going to be happy right. to, to connect. Yeah. You just want, you just want to connect. Yeah. I'm, I, yeah, I, uh, I send me a note. Just let me know where you saw us or where you saw mm -hmm. something. We'll be glad to connect. And I will point out that there's a white connect button and there's a blue connect button. The white connect button sends that generic invitation that you can't send an invitation. So when you see that, and if you want to send a personal note, click on the person's face. And when you click on the person's face, it will then take you to where you can connect with them using the blue connect button, which will allow you to send a personal note if you'd like to do that. And it looks like I got a connection up here. Let's look, let's click here and see. Courtney accepted my connection. So now I can actually message her. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and then I guess, and the other thing, if you, can you go back for a second to that other job? So can you go back to that job you had before? Just go back one. To the job description? Mm -hmm. Yes. So it says right there that you have 14 connections into the company already, six company mm -hmm. alumni, uh, you know, leverage, Everybody, if you if you're connected to somebody already in the company, or if you, you know, alumni, you know, here's a great opportunity for you to connect with somebody that you're already, you know, reach out to somebody because you never know they may be able to help get your resume to the right place. Yeah, the only the only time this is really hard is at a university because they don't they don't do actually people who work at the university. It's all alumni of the university. So man, this process doesn't work if you're trying to get into a university. <laughs> right. Right. Okay, so now um, I'm gonna go back to home up here and I'm gonna show you a few more things that I do. So I will uh, click on hashtag hiring um, and I'll then do hashtag, um, let's do training, okay? And hit enter. And this time I'm gonna filter on posts, not jobs, because I wanna see who posted something out there that actually has to do with hiring and training. Um, and I wanna know, okay, this looks kind of interesting, right? New jobs and enablement, let's see more. She, wow, she did a long post here, but she, she did sales enablement, revenue enablement, customer enablement, training, coaching, instructional design and hiring. So if I was looking for this type of role, she has connected me with people and stuff. And the cool thing is, is Stephanie is definitely one of those people who's reaching out. Number one, I'm going to click on her and I'm going to connect with her because she's amazing, right? We want to be connected with amazing people. And then I'm going to come back to her, to her post here. And if I actually applied for a job that she had out there, she's saying, I'm hiring for this. I can then go apply for it and I could come back to her post and I can comment and I can say, Hey, I just applied for this. I'm very interested. I'd love to connect with you. Um, and I would try to connect with her as well, but I've also got, I've also got access to her right here on her post, which is amazing. Um, if I wanted to follow one of these hashtags. So for example, if, if you were a sales enablement person, you can actually click on the hashtag 
And you can follow that hashtag so that anything that comes up under sales enablement comes into your LinkedIn feed. That's, that's really nice. Um, okay. Hashtag hiring, hashtag, whatever your job you're looking for. So let me show you another one. Let's do hashtag hiring, hashtag project management. Let's see what that one does for us. Do I spell it right? I think so. Posts. Okay, um, looking for someone that kind of has like a there we go. Our client is seeking IT project manager, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so this would be a good person to connect with if you're looking for a project management job and it seems to be the right kind of thing. The other one that I do a lot as I look for people, I look for um we are hiring and this is going to pull up people that have this in their profile so now i'm going to go to people and look at this guy or girl her name is troy walter we are hiring masha we are hiring we are hiring we are hiring so i always try to connect with these lovely people because um, they, they're reaching out to the LinkedIn community. They're letting us know they're hiring and, um, they might want to help. So I always look for people. I'm, I'm always looking for happy, helpful, wonderful people to connect with in order to, you know, get my resume and share it with others. Okay. So we are hiring. We've done the hashtags. I'm also looking for recruiters. Okay. So I'm looking for recruiters. And I'm either looking for a recruiter in the company, like we looked for before, or I'm looking for an industry specific recruiter. So if I'm looking for a, uh, some of you are in here are executives, I saw that. So you, you, know, you might be looking for an executive recruiter and I'm gonna go to people again. Okay, and it's gonna start pulling up executive recruiters. Some of them are gonna be at companies, others are gonna be at recruiting agencies, but I wanna connect with you know, the executive recruiters because any kind of recruiter is, is highly likely gonna connect with you guys. And then also um, I might wanna look at like, a, a, you know, uh, let's do sales, a sales recruiter specifically, okay? If you're in sales, a uh, field sales recruiter at Applied Medical, software sales recruiter, connect with all these recruiters if you're in sales. They're so well connected. And even if they're not the right person and they say, hey, I can't help you with this, say, okay, but do you know someone who can help me with this? This is what I'm trying to do. Um, and, and getting connected with, with those recruiters is, is fantastic. They do the work for you if you find the right ones. And you can look for one specifically here in Dallas or you can do remote. It's really up to you guys. You can try to meet with them in person or you can just connect online. It's all up to you. But humans are amazing. We connect with humans, not databases. Brandy, can I ask you a question? Absolutely, David. Hi, how are you? I'm fine, thanks. I'm uh, enjoying it as usual. Um, do you put commas or just spaces? Or how do you know when to put a hashtag? Oh, up so, there that, that search thing? so think, think about this. If you, if you made a post on LinkedIn, um, you might hashtag it with something, right? Like me, all my posts are hashtag strengthology. So let me show you. Hashtag strength, strengthology, and it comes up with, it's, I'm in people right now, I got to go to posts. And you can see all my wonderful posts that have strengthology, uh, you know, all the posts I do that have the strengthology hashtag. So if you want to follow my hashtag, everything that Brandy hashtags with strengthology, then you can click on the strengthology hashtag and you could actually follow it. I, ha I have a measly eight followers on my hashtag. Okay, so if some people have these in their profiles, so um, let's try that. Let's try it. Let's just see if hashtag hiring is in anybody's profile. Let's look at people and see. So these guys have it somewhere in their profiles, hashtag hiring. And she even has the banner up. She's great, right? <laughs> Connect with her. <laughs> She's, she's talking to us. Is this helpful, you guys? Yeah. It's just knowing when to 
put what? Try it all, figure it out, learn it. Right. Try different, try different things. See what happens. See what comes up. See what works and what doesn't work. Identify quickly what's not working and get rid of it, and identify what is working and keep going with it. Super helpful. Good, Alyssa. Well, it's been very interesting. You know, over the last few years, as as you've come present here, every time your website's a little bit more, a little bit more. It looks like it's like almost like totally done now. Oh no, I've got six years worth of product development. Are you kidding? Uh, okay. <laughs> you have many more things you want to do with it. Okay. Oh, I have so much that I want to do with it. Yeah. But it, it seems at this point though, it's really for somebody to be able to interpret where you're at. It seems like it's a really, it's it, the tools there to lay things out and, and to, to show you where you're at, which I think it, is really great. Yeah, and I and I do have people tell me they go back to it and they remind themselves. They look at it and remind themselves who they are, what they're about, what they care about. It's it's such a good reminder to keep it at the top of mind. You know, it's good to look at right before interviews. It's good to look at whenever you're getting distracted by all the things, the shiny objects, right? What kind of questions can we answer for anybody? I've got a question about how e how easy to is it to go back to our dashboards? So are you in the system, David? I think so. I did the uh, 40 extra, you know, the that one time it's been about a year. And You've done I the upgrade. But so there's two systems. Remember, there's two systems. You've got the Gallup system and the Gallup is the one who provided you with the assessment and they provide you with a report. So if you're trying to go back to your Gallup stuff, um, let's go back. You're going to go to Gallup and you're going to try to log in up here on your account. Okay. And then if you're using Strengthology, which is my business, my company and my tool, then you've got to come in and log in or register whatever here. Okay, so that I think I did, I did, you gave me a very big explanation. So I think that was it. Um, we can, we can check here. Let's just see. Let's look at David, shall we guys? Let's yeah. see what David's got going on here. Let's look at David. Yep, here you are, David. So you are in Strengthology, which means it should be fairly easy for you to, again, go to strengthology.co, enter oh. your, your email address. You signed up for a one-year subscription, so you, you have this for a whole year. Um, this doesn't look like you. This looks like David C. Yeah, I think you I am. Know David. Oh, I am. Oh, it's your I middle. Am. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, so, so, right. So David can come in here and he can go, okay, remind myself, I'm a great team manager. I love to manage people. I love understanding their psychology. Um, by the way, David, if you get into a management position on your next role, you should definitely sign up for the leader subscription so that you can get everybody else on your team in here and you can see their results now as the leader of the team. Um, and there's, there's a couple different settings on that and I'll show you how to do that so that you can allow them to see the results or not, depending on how transparent you wanna be, but at least you will be able to, you'll be able to see all of this information on each person. Um, so that you really understand them and understand like they're where they're good at in the in the strength zone as well. Um, so yeah, so we can say, okay, so David should definitely be in a position of people management. He's highly strategic, meaning that he's really going to direct well, and I'm getting that from down here. He's going to direct well. He's going to manage people well. Um, he also needs to do something that he really believes in. So let's let's ask David. David, is there like some sort of nonprofit? that you are just so compelled to being a part of? Well, I think uh, it would, faith-based could be something to that effect. I mean, uh, also, something also, that makes a significant impact. You know, I know you you run a lot, you do these marathons. Right. Is there is there a reason why you do those? Uh, I, I do because of the, uh, the potential that's in every one of us. Uh, is so much stratospherically higher than we really think of ourselves. Mm -hmm. And I, I found that out through, uh, you know, 50 some marathons and 16 Bostons and all that, how much more we have if we just allow ourselves to keep going. But we usually find a way to uh, reasons why to quit or to alter ourselves because we, we get from society some sort of a limit and we shouldn't be doing that. So that's my big belief. Gotcha. And and what what significant impact do you want to make on this world? Like when you look at everything, if you could do anything and just make a huge significant impact, 
what would that be? Uh, it would probably um, be that what I just said about our potential is so much higher. You are so much more strong than you know, and that uh, you can activate your faith and your belief system to propel yourself much farther than you ever thought possible. Okay. So let's just take that guys. And let's just say um, that based on what you, what you said, let me come back over here. You might be interested in um, what's the foundation for breast cancer guys. Susan K. Susan, Susan B. B. Komen. Susan B. Komen. Susan G. Komen. G. G. Yeah, right. Komen. Thank you. Komen. Am I spelling this right? I can't. I'm Komen not. is K-O-M-E-N. Susan. We're going to get it right. K -O -E -N. <laughs> all of us. There we go. Nonprofit. Okay. This to me is kind of what you said, right? People who really got a, to hardcore fight for some, right. for some things. So we would choose something like this for you to go look at. We go look at the types of jobs. There's 800 employees here and we go, okay, what, what do they got going on? Do they have you know, do they have a need for coaches? Do they have a need for managers? Because, you know, you want to live to a, towards a purpose, towards a belief, towards a passion, doing something for a company that, that really has these underlying values that you are thoroughly aligned with. And we may look through this and we, we may say, nope, there's, there's nothing here that, that looks like it's for you, but we may find something too, you know, and we may find something that's, that's interesting to you and relevant. Um, that you could apply for and then get connected the way we just talked about talked about it. There's a parallel thing to that. I have been looking into the Parkland Foundation, who I've been sending my fundraising money through the marathons. Parkland um, Hospital. For, yes, Parkland Hospital. They have a they have a summer camp for burned children, and gotcha. uh, I've been I've been doing that one for twenty some years. Yeah, and let's just see what comes up with this. Here it is. Let's go look at it. Let's go look at jobs, 18 employees. So there's, yeah, so that's kind of an inside track, right? There's nothing right. out here that you could do, right. but that's really interesting. So my, my thought then goes to, okay, well, what other, um, you know, burn victim foundations are there? If this is something you're super passionate about, I, I would want to start looking into, well, what else is out there? Maybe there's right. something bigger out there that I could actually be a part of and go work for a nonprofit to to support this fully with my skills. And by the way, gee, this made me think of something else, guys. If I do um, top 100 recruiters out here, right. or executive recruiters or whatever, look at this. I have wonderful articles, 2022 Forbes. You guys can now go see which are the recruiting firms that made the list. Go start connecting with people at, at the on these lists on LinkedIn and talking to them. These are huge recruiting firms that could help you. Lots of them, lots of them. What's another question that I can answer or give at least my perspective today for somebody? Let's see here. Michelle says, what's your strategy for assisting people who choose not to use social media? Yeah, you're just really gonna have to network heavily. So you're gonna have to go to job networking um, things. You're gonna have to go to networking, not just job ones, but just networking events and find things locally to get involved in. So let me give you guys a really cool story for someone um, that was a teacher and she was in transition. She was done with teaching. She said, I want out. She wanted to become a change management consultant. And I asked her, I said, you know what a big challenge this is to actually go into becoming a change management consultant from being a teacher. Like it's a huge leap. She said, I know, but I feel very confident. And I, and I, she, we looked at her strengths. I said, I am so confident you can do this too, but it's really going to take pushing a boulder down a hill and then back up and then back down. You know, it was like, it's, it's going to, you know, so what she did was so smart. She's so strategic, which just tells me she really should be where she is today. Um, she got involved with a change management cohort where she got to meet all these other change management professionals. And she actually got to work with them on initiatives through the summer. She was doing it June, July, August, September. 
I'm not kidding you. Six months later, she had a change management consultant job at a company because one of those people got her in, you know, to one of these areas and she has done nothing but be successful since, um, she has done, you, you know, um, I don't know if she's gotten certifications, but she's gotten more education on it. She's just done a great job. She stayed really connected with the change management community. Um, and she's, she's living her best life. Six, six months, you guys, six months out of being a teacher, making a transition change. And it was because she made a very strategic move to rub shoulders with all the right people and put that effort in. What else can we answer for anybody? We've got a couple minutes left. This may be a bit of a bigger question, but um, something that I'm 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 focused on just finding the job and getting the transition. Right. And so something I'm hearing a lot of people is like, find the company that, you know, has the kind of culture that you want to move in. How do you find that? Because <laughs> when they you know, you go to their website and you get kind of their your their their marketing push that they want you to hear. But like, how do I find out which companies I would be interested in that would be a good fit for like what would be some advice there and i know that's probably a oh it's great and complicated question. Let, i'm gonna ask kind of a rhetorical question right let's let's say you didn't have the internet okay what how would you how would you figure that out if you didn't have the internet i grew up without the internet and i'm having to think back and think yeah what did i do <laughs> <laughs> how would you find out the inside track on a company i mean you have to meet people yes yeah who knows best the people that work there so if you can find somebody to talk to that works there it seems intimidating but i'm telling you there's so many nice people that even if you're just connecting with them on linkedin like if you want to look, know the inside track on a company and you just find some people to connect with and some do just reach out to them and say hey can i steal 30 minutes i know this is random can i steal 30 minutes of your time and just ask you about what it's like to work for this company i have some questions and some say yes, some say no. Most say yes to that uh, because people, if they, especially if they love their company, they're happy to talk to you and recruit you. And, and guess what? Now you just have a connect. Now you have a connection into the company. So it's actually a pretty good strategy to get some, make some connections as well. Yeah, Isn't that an informational interview that you're asking for? No, this could be some random person that has nothing to do with what you want to do there. It could just be somebody who works there in some department. It's called informational interviewing. You want to reach out and you right. want to ask questions about what they do. Let somebody- Sorry, I didn't know the technical them. term. I guess it's called informational interviewing. <laughs> right, you're conducting the interview uh, and you're asking what's it like to work there and what do you like about working there? And because people like to talk about themselves. And I think one of the things you're going to find is that people who are willing to talk to you for people who are just like us, who've been laid off, who've participated in these kinds of groups and realize this. There will be people out there who've never been unemployed. They will be one day, but they won't get what we're doing until they are unemployed and they're on our you know, this side of the street. So, you know, don't be offended when people don't respond or if they don't go, no, I don't have time for anything. But uh, it's it's a great opportunity to you know, you want to find out about the company. Don't believe everything you read on Glassdoor because, you know, you got to remember just like Yelp and everything else, people who complain about companies tend to verbalize it a lot more than people who enjoy working for a company. And it's also really subjective. As someone that has a wonderful manager and has a wonderful experience with that company is going to tell you all these great things. And then someone that works for someone they don't get along with and has had a hard time, they're going to tell you crappy things. So it's, it's hard, you know, it's hard to know what the actual cult, quote unquote culture is like when it could actually be different in different departments as well. Walt, did you have a comment? Well, I did. For those of you who might be interested, I've been working on what I call vetting corporate culture. And so it would be um, information about how do you find out about the corporate culture? And there's basically three kinds. There's ones that, that they, this is what they want the culture to be. Another one is what they post on their web page. And then the third one is what actually works, what's going on in the company. So I uh, did some research on this and I picked uh, the top 10 that I've seen through research uh, culture items out there. And I built a table. The table says, well, what's the culture? What's the definition of it? 
what's the value of that particular culture? What, what good is collaboration, for example? What does that do for you? So the value then is, uh, what does it look like? Uh, so how do you know that that kind of culture is operating today? And then I've got some questions that you might ask to determine, is that what it's working like today? So I'm targeting the what's actually going on type questions. So if you would like to help me with this development uh, of this particular topic, send me an email to the Walt Underline Glass at yahoo.com. And I will send you this table. And uh, your requirement is to get that is that you, I would appreciate your feedback on what you think about it, what suggestions you might have, how you might guide me to do maybe a better job of doing it. So I'm still doing some research and working on that, but I'll offer that to you if you're interested. Um, okay. And he, here's another way, like, uh, this is Livio. He works at Liberty Mutual. Um, I have I have personally worked with him and you can see his posts are very, they're really inspiring. And you could you you can tell like working for him or working for his team or his department would be really wonderful. Um, so although it doesn't tell us the whole culture of Liberty Mutual, it does tell us, you know, what the culture would be like working for someone like him. Um, so you could do that too, is look at some of the people that work there and see what they're posting and see if you can find anybody there that's, you know, really, you know, posting a strong message about their culture and their company and um, seeing if, if you like, if, you know, if you align with it. You know, as with anything else, you have to have a target culture. What are you looking for? And, you know, you use uh, Brandy's services or tools to say, this is where I thrive. This is the kind of thing that I like best. And, this, and so I could describe my target culture. And then you could say, all right, and you could develop your own row in the table. I mean, I just picked out 10. They may not be yours. None of them might be yours. Might be yeah, it's, something amazing. Else. it's amazing how different people, what people want is so different. You know, some people want, you know, something just really nice. And then other people want something really aggressive. And then some people want to, uh, you know, really complex having to fix problems and other people want to, you know, maximize and take things to the next level based on where the company is today. It's like, it's, it's really different for different people, but what, what they're looking for in culture. It's always interesting how the conversation tends to always, whatever we're talking about looking for a job is what's the culture like and how do you find out about it? We can be talking about anything else and we always seem to want to get back to finding that right company, which is really important because we all want to enjoy where we're at. And I think it's more important personally to find the right manager versus the right company. Um, I think your experience at the company will be heavily based on your experience with the manager or leader that you work with. I agree. Culture works by manager and by department, not just the whole company. And really, it's the it's the people that make up the culture. So if you if you have good good leaders and good managers, and that then have good teams, then the culture is good. Yeah, and that's I think why I'm having trouble with the question of what what are your target companies, and that's where my mind goes is like, well, if I like the people I work with and I like the team, then I, I could really work anywhere and be happy with that. So that's for me, that's just why that's kind of a challenging yeah. question. Yeah, so. and I think what you have to ask yourself, Chris, is like, what do you really want to do in this world? You know, what do what do you want to spend your time impacting? Because any company you go to, you're contributing towards that effort. So if you want to help the comp, you know, help the world with cybersecurity, then you lean into that. If you want to help the world with, um, um, you know, with, oh, guys, give me another something finance, then you go towards that. If you want to help the world, you know, like you really got to think about how do I want to help this world? There's tons of jobs out there and there's tons of companies. So if you can really narrow it down by what would I feel good about contributing to every single day, then we can figure out how to get you into those you know, it gives us some narrow, narrow, it narrows it for us a little bit, at least. Well, Brandy, I want to thank you very much for your time. I know I want to wrap up here what's going on here. Uh, oh, there's one more question popped in. Is there a list of hashtags that you've seen somewhere that can be used on LinkedIn? Well, you can use any hashtag you want on LinkedIn. So I think you just need to go search, you know, whatever you can think of use that hashtag and when you call it up you can actually um uh see how many people are following that particular hashtag so i mean some of them have you know hundreds of thousands of people who follow certain hashtags 
Yeah, and you just try out the ones that pull up the most results. You know, just try a couple of different ones. Like, like sometimes you have to try hashtag recruiter. Other times it's hashtag talent acquisition. Um, there, there's a couple of different ways that of uh, different people called things differently. So you just have to try them and see what's pulling up the most results for you. You know, hashtag sales, hashtag sales enablement, hashtag sales operations. It, you just got to try different ones. All right. So as, as I've mentioned many, many times, there's three books that you need to have in your library. One's the Strength Finders book, because I think it's just real important. It allows you to figure out how to describe who you are. And I think it's a really great book. The second book we talked about, we had our speaker a few weeks ago, B-Sharp with Minna Brand and Paul Asinoff talking about how to do a one-page bio, how to introduce yourself. And the th lessons you're going to learn from Strength Finders will help you learn how to introduce yourself and tell people who you are. Uh, so those are both great books. So Brandy, thank you very much for being with us today. Uh, I'll be sure to put Brandy's information in the chat in our uh, email going out this afternoon so you can, uh, if you want to reach out to her, so you can do that. Uh, just a reminder, we will not have a meeting the next two Fridays, but we'll be back on August 12th. I'll be sure to put emails out about that. So uh, I'll be out of Wi-Fi connection for the next couple of weeks. So I just won't let, uh, we won't be having a meeting the next two weeks. If you have not put your 30 second reductions into the Zoom chat window, please do. That way we can be sure to get all your personal information uh, so we can get the email to you this afternoon, get you added to our roster. Uh, just put in name, phone number, email address, position you're looking for, a couple target companies. We'll get all that out to everybody here in the next couple of hours. Uh, please join Career DFW and Career USA each week. Uh, we're taking a break uh, during the month of July. Uh, live sessions will restart on August 9th. Um, <clears throat> I am putting an email out at the beginning of every week with recommended viewing. So if you've got to have your LinkedIn fix, your interviewing fix, your uh, resume or networking fix, just look for the email that goes out on Monday and there'll be videos that you can watch from the Career USA YouTube channel. This session has been recorded. You will be able to go back and watch it on the Career USA YouTube channel, the Career DFW Facebook page. On the Career USA YouTube channel, click on playlist. Otherwise, you're just going to see over 390 videos in some random order. Pick the list that you want. Every video that I upload, I put into a video, put into a playlist. Uh, and then where you see that red arrow, click on view full playlist, and then up will come. Um, you can go back and chronologically go back and watch any one of the videos that you're interested in. So thank you very much for joining us today, everybody. Have a great weekend, and we will see you in three weeks. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Thanks for you. Have an awesome weekend. Thank you. Thank you.